Thanks, Tim. Um, and thanks for the opportunity to sort of clear the air here. Um, yeah, Lake Resources has been very busy over the last six years from a, a company that started off um, with a very, very small market cap um, and has moved through to where we were um, and entering into the ASX 200 on Monday. Um, we've had the same board in place pretty much the whole way through and Steve Prominence was the um, founding managing director and CEO and did an exceptional job in project generation and putting these assets together. We were very early into Argentina after the election of the Macri government and Steve did an exceptional job putting together one of the biggest land holdings of any listed company at the time, notwithstanding recent mergers. Um, so six months ago, as a board, we started talking about a, a transition because the life cycle of these, if you're fortunate enough to be an explorer that looks like it's going to go the distance and move into production, um, it's highly unlikely that you have the skill sets at the board level that will carry you through into production and running a very large business. So we started talking about a transition and looking at, um, and also as part of our, our continuing investigation into um, looking at uplisting the company and the US capital markets on a major exchange, either NASDAQ or New York Stock Exchange. Um, and then four months ago, we commenced a, um, a search process um, and it was a global search and that has come to its, nearly come to its conclusion. Um, Part of the, the transition, obviously, uh, we were looking to uh, move Steve into an executive role in, in another area and bring in, um, you know, pe people that have had experience in managing and delivering projects of this scale. Um, so it, it became like a, a natural thing to do. Um, obviously, it would I can't speak for Steve and I wouldn't um, attempt to, but obviously his actions would suggest that he wasn't... Uh, prepared to consider what was proposed. And um, sadly, he, he left the company. He um, emailed me on, on Friday uh, to say that he had resigned as managing director and as director of all other subsidiaries of the company um, immediate, with immediate effect. And so given that, um, I, was in, I was preparing to leave for New York because we're in the final stages of shortlisting candidates for a CEO role, as well as non-executive directors and, and other executive positions within the company as we move move towards the um, setting up an office here in the US. And, and so that's where the announcement came from on Monday. Obviously, um, as it's turned out, there was some confusion around that and the, uh, the reasons behind it. Um, it's very hard in those sort of announcements to you know, build a story around as to why and who said what and who did what. But um, was a, a, it was a factual release to the, the exchange and, and outlined not only the resignation of Steve, but also the, uh, the move to create a corporate office in, in the US. And, and Stu, was there any plans to kind of uh, have uh, Steve work through a, a notice period? I mean, the shock was that his departure was immediate. Was, was there a plan to offer him uh, another role within Lake? Yeah. There was, uh, and we were negotiating that at the time. So that's why it came as such, such a surprise um, to receive his email on Friday. And, and I suppose, you know, with the, the concern now with the departure of the CEO is, you know, we've got a couple of questions here. Um, who's going to lead the project uh, to completion now? How long before the board appoints a new CEO? And do you foresee any delays in, in project execution as a result of this? Okay, well, we have a COO, um, Gatam Primslu, who who is based in Argentina. He's he's tasked solely to deliver the Kachi project. There's currently 300 people, including the team uh, finalising the construction of the demonstration plant on site in Argentina. Um, so he has been building out that team aggressively over the last 12 months, and and that hasn't uh, been slowed in any way. Um, and, and obviously, you know, we've just come out of COVID. So through all those years, we've had people on the ground in Argentina um, that haven't had direct access to the CEO. So they've done a, a really good job. We've had a strong team and it's getting stronger by the day. We're, we're continually uh, bringing people into that team as we take this, gain some momentum on delivering this project. Um, so yeah, we, we, um, 
we don't see any issues with uh, with not having that CEO currently. Um, obviously, um, that team is overseen by the board, um, and part of this process of recruitment is uh, to strengthen that board and have people who have had um, significant experience in in South America in in delivering major projects. And 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 sorry, is there, is there a timeline for the new CEO? Um, we will complete a, we'll have a short list of uh, applicants. That's one of the reasons I was in New York. I'm actually in Washington at the Benchmark Minerals Conference now. Um, we'll come down to, a, it looks like we'll have a short list of four um, really good candidates for the CEO role, I would suggest by the end of next week, early July, and subject to notice periods, obviously, but we would be hopeful we'll make an announcement um, pretty shortly after having second round interviews and negotiating position. And, and Stu, uh, investors are keen to go and get an update on the Lilac demonstration plant also at Karchi. And, and of course, shareholders are always worried that, you know, when you lose a, a CEO and he sells his shares, that there may be some technical issues. So can you, can you talk through uh, when do you expect the commissioning of the plant to start with? Yeah, um, just on the, the technical issues, and there's been some scuttlebutt in the market about, you know, Steve resigned and sold all his shares because the Lilac process doesn't work. Well, you know, we've got four and a half years of data and test work that's been done at bench scale and pilot scale. During the pandemic, we shipped Brian to California and ran the pilot plant. The demonstration plant is in Argentina. It's currently in a warehouse in Salta. It'll be moved to site when the facility is completed. The timeline on that is the 15th of July. Um, and the, there will be a team from Lilac um, sent on the ground in Argentina in early early July. And that, that will be between 10 and, uh, sorry, eight and 12 people will be on site from Lilac. And, and just on the concept of the process not working, I don't know if you're following the Bolivian situation, but the Bolivian government um, has just shortlisted from 22 contenders down to six participants to work on the uh, Sala de Uni there. And Lilac's one of those six people. You've got four from China, one from Russia and Lilac being the only representative of uh, the USA. So we're very happy to see that. And hopefully that will sort of allay some of the fears that this technology doesn't work. And, you know, quite frankly, after we wouldn't be building the demonstration plant if we didn't think it did work. And I'm pretty sure Lilac wouldn't be bothering sending their people to, to site, particularly given their burn in um, into the project. You know, obviously they, they, they own 10% of this project if they deliver product at spec, which is 99.95% which is significantly higher than 99.5, which is considered the, the current standard technical grade product or battery quality product. So they've got a lot on the, on the line here and they're taking it very seriously as are we. And both companies, Lilac and Lake, have been working extensively with, with Hatch um, on, this, on this project. And uh, uh, we're very comfortable with, with the, uh, the data set that we have and confident that it will work extremely well. And, and, and once commissioned, um, how long will it need to operate before you're producing lithium chloride? Uh, well, we'll do a, a dry commissioning and then a wet commissioning, and then we will, we'll start um, generating concentrate, lithium chloride concentrate immediately after that. So all in all, we'll probably, it looks like we're going to produce 120,000 uh, litres of, of concentrate over three months. So we would expect that, Certainly within, uh, by the end of August, we would, would start to be um, collecting the other concentrate. And then that, that concentrate will then be shipped to Hazen in Colorado that we've used before, and they will then convert that into lithium carbonate. And, and so how long will it take to convert this kind of lithium chloride into high purity, battery quality lithium carbonate for your off-takers well, and, and qualification? Yeah, they've got a, they have a pilot plant ready to go there to the conversion um, of the, of the uh, concentrate. So when we used them last time, that was a, a test, test work and that took you know, five or six weeks to get the results. I don't think it'll take that much this time. I, I would expect it would be somewhere around three weeks or so. And, and um, Stu, what, what are your conversations been like with your kind of, you, you know, the, your partners, your offtake partners, your investors in regards to um, conversations around Steve and how the process will be managed um, given Steve's not in place at the moment? Uh, 
conversation has been fine. It's business as usual. We are moving ahead. Um, we are bringing in a, a more experienced team to lead this project um, across a whole range of uh, positions. Um, and, and the conversations are ongoing. You know, for example, our, our financing with the um, export credit agencies, we've got a lead con two lead consultants there, SD Capital and GKB Ventures. Um, they've been in constant contact. We've had meetings with JP Morgan and Citi, who we uh, appointed as joint lead managers only a week ago. We announced that the week, uh, whenever that was, I think it was Tuesday last week. Um, those conversations are fine. I'll be meeting uh, those guys in London uh, the week after next um, and have ongoing discussions there. Peter Nielsen, our CFO, has been uh, active in those discussions as well. So he will be uh, working with us uh, in bringing those finance packages along as, as we progress things. And, and um, of course, you've got the Ford Memorandum of Understanding. Um, and when it was announced, it was suggested they may seek to... Uh, acquire equity in Lake and, and we, we kind of, you know, make the observation there's no major shareholder on the major institutional shareholder on the Lake Register. So given where the price is, um, can you talk to these sort of conversations that may open up as a result of where the share price is at the moment? Um, vaguely, because that's uh, subject to a non-binding MOU, obviously, but um, in terms of we don't have major institutions on our register, we're now in the ASX 200 and do have institutions building positions on the register, which we haven't had for some time. To date, there's no one gone substantial, but um, we do have institutional presence on the register. The discussions with off -take, potential off-takers have been ongoing and the interest is, is high. Um, I guess to a point I, I had would have hoped we might have had something finalised by now or gone to a slightly firmer um, state, but those in this market, you know, there's been a lot of activity. Just in the last two days, we've seen two significant investments in lithium companies, one this morning with Stellantis and Vulcan. And yesterday we saw a subsidiary of Exxon uh, take a position in uh, E3 Metals in, uh, in Canada. So, the, and, and I'm at the benchmark conference this week. And I have to tell you the, the interest in lithium and the demand projections and the, and the concern around supply uh, is intensifying mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, I think you'll find that you know, we, will, we will progress these off-take discussions and I would hope to uh, be able to say something further on that in the, within a month. Sure, and, and, and obviously with your inclusion in the ASX 200, you have in, you know, index funds buying stock and then they're lending out the stock and, and, and the timing of which has been unfortunate because you're obviously subject here to a, a short selling attack, I'd suggest by some hedge funds. Um, what, are you, what are your thoughts on that? That's their risk. Um, you know, we we are progressing these projects where we're on the verge of appointing someone to spearhead and, and increase activity on our three other projects and bring them up the curve towards PFS and potentially look at bringing them into production very quickly after Karchi. Um, we will have significant news flow. As I said, the demonstration plant should start being commissioned mid-July. With product coming out of that, I would expect that's a really fairly reasonable catalyst for this share price if we start announcing that 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 did uh, deliver spec, which is our expectation. Um, we've got drilling going on at Oleros, which that, that was drilling our second hole at Oleros, where we're testing brines um, as we're drilling. Um, there's a lot, there is a lot going on. And, and I think also there's a, well, a risk if you're short that when we announce some of these positions, um, new additions to the board and, and new CEO, um, you know, I think the market will be well impressed. And, and you mentioned but, in your, sorry, sorry, Stu. No, you're right. Uh, you, you mentioned in your, your recent announcement that kind of bringing other projects online is also a key focus. Kind of what, what yeah. stage are these at? And is there an active strategy in place to progress them? Yeah, absolutely there is. As I just said, we're about to appoint someone to spearhead that that progress and that, that, that group of assets. Um, I suspect we've already committed 15 million US to that. Uh, I suspect we will increase that and look at bringing all those projects on in parallel rather than doing them one at a time. And the person we're bringing on has uh, real experience in, in project delivery and he, he's um, sort of itching to get on with it there. So there will be more news on, on that as well. Because And the reason being, we are definitely going into a, a supply deficit in the lithium sector. And we have an opportunity because you can bring these projects on faster than the traditional methods, 
and some of the traditional and the major, the incumbents, some of them are going to have issues with their expansion plans given um, regional issues. Um, and there's also you know, problems with water security and all types of things. So you know, we're very confident. We'll, we've got a sustainability report in final draft that will be released um, in the not too distant future that outlines our water usage, carbon footprint and a whole range of other um, interesting data points. And I think the market will be very impressed when they see things like our water usage, particularly in the light of some of the scuttlebutt that's been thrown around um, as we've moved this project forward. There's certainly been uh, lots of questions coming through on that, Steve. There's a, there's a lot of questions here. Um, you've also, you've obviously announced plans to move operations to the US to better align yourselves with uh, US off-takers and banks. Does yep. this and the expansion strategy kind of compete for resources in the short to medium term? Financial resources or personal? Yeah, yeah well, we're probably both in this sort of market. Uh, no, um, to be honest, it's we've got 160 odd million dollars in the bank. Um, we we have an ability to, to raise funds as and when we need them. Um, you know, the reason for doing this is we've got Hatch in, in Toronto with some guys working out of the San Diego office. In, in the West Coast, we've got our technology partner, Lilac. On the East Coast, we've got um, financiers and, and a potential uplisting in the US markets. And then we're looking at an office in Miami, which is a a well-known destination for mining companies, uh, South American speaking, um, recruitment will, would be easy there. Um, and it's a, it's a good place for people to live and educate children if we have to move people to that office. And there's direct flights, American Airlines hubs out of Miami and there's direct flights to Buenos Aires regularly. It's an eight hour flight. It leaves, it leaves at night and lands there at six in the morning, goes straight to the office. And that avoids this horrendous issue of having executives flying all over the world on long haul flights, having to be away from home for two to three weeks at a time as a minimum. So it's a whole, just centralizing everyone in a, in a time zone where we can be far more efficient. So that, that was the reason behind it and the impact on resources would be minimal. Understood, Stuart. And we've probably got time um, for one last word from yourself, given the panic in the market and uh, what we've seen over the last couple of couple of days in particular, what, what, what are the key catalysts that investors should focus on uh, for the long term? Sure. Well, deficit in the lithium market, opportunity to deliver 50,000 tonnes um, of high purity product. We've got catalysts coming with uh, the demonstration plant, potentially with offtake agreements and discussions. And we've had ongoing interest in people participating in offtake if there's any changes to the current arrangements. Um, drilling success at Oleroz. Um, we're testing brines um, and awaiting assays on the first hole at Oleroz. We'll be releasing that at some point. New appointments, you, you know, the quality and the calibre of these people that we're, we're looking to uh, you know, shortlist are, are nothing short of exceptional. And I think uh, the market will be very impressed when they see the, the new, new look lake as we uh, take this project towards development. So really exciting times. It's disappointing the way the uh, the markets reacted to the news. Um, the impact we have a you know, the, the impact of shorts and the, the scuttlebutt has rattled the cage of not so savvy retail investors, unfortunately. So the professional market has uh, has a real impact this week. But hopefully we can uh, turn that around with some positive news flow in the next little while. Thanks, Stu. Thank appreciate you. your time. I know it's late there in New York. Um, I hope. Um, this presentation has cleared up a lot of those issues for shareholders and potential new investors. There's a lot more questions. I'll send them through to you over the weekend. Thanks for your sure. time. Good on you. Thanks very much, Tim. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. No problem.